Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Odin's Movie Blog. I am the critic who is a cynic. Hope doing well. And today we're going to be talking about a lot of the crazy delays and, and pushbacks that we've had because of everything going on with CV. A lot of this stuff was breaking yesterday with more and more movies being added on to the delayed indefinitely tran, uh, train. Uh, obviously, some... Uh, movies have already been given new dates, like, for example, Fast and Furious 9 has been scheduled for April of 2021, so almost a full year that film has been pushed back. And other films have been said, okay, we don't know exactly when we're going to release it, but all we know is that it's not going to be coming out on the scheduled date of release. So far, it's really only affected uh, March films. It has affected a couple of summer films, for example, like the Fast and Furious movies. And so a lot of us are wondering, when will films like Black Widow, when will other uh, big summer releases be impacted by everything going on? going on with CV, and I would say as the days go by, as more cases become uh, you know, active, obviously we, we look and see everything going on, and we know that there's going to be more cases before there's fewer cases. I don't think we've reached our peak quite yet, especially since a lot of reports are saying that we're almost on track to be like Italy. If everyone knows what's going on with Italy right now, everything has basically been shut down. Um, so we really don't know exactly what the numbers are going to look like. But movie studios are starting to panic. Movie studios are starting to uh, realize the des you know the desperation of the situation. Uh, movie theaters, by by and large, have remained open. Uh, I got an email from Cinemark just the other day saying that they were going to remain open and that they were just taking extra measures, whatever extra measures actually means, to uh, you know clean their. Uh, theaters and to provide uh, various things to help with people to help fight against spreading of the virus, but they are still um, by all accounts and measures remaining open. So, so far I have not heard anything from AMC, have not heard anything from Regal either. And so basically once those shut down, more and more studios will begin to push back as well. Uh, we're looking at the very least in the next couple weeks, uh, any films that were set to be released, either not getting released or getting postponed. Uh, but it's gonna be interesting nonetheless. But I wanted to go ahead and just kind of give you a recap of all the films that have been postponed so far. And I'm using here a article from Variety. And of course these will probably change as the hours go by, as the days go by, more films will be added Added to this, we might actually get official release dates for some of these films uh, in the future as well. But this is what we know so far. So as you can see, a couple of these films I mentioned on yesterday's video. Um, but again, I just want to give a full comprehensive list of all the films, big releases at the very least, that have been announced so far. So of course, Fast Furious 9 has been pushed back a year to April 2021 globally. The U.S. release date is set for April 2nd of 2021. So that's a very, uh, very big one because that was supposed to be one of the big summer box office releases. So not only was that pushed back you know, a month or two, it was pushed back almost an entire year. Uh, just goes to show you how many studios, how seriously many studios are taking what's going on with CV and just the complete um, lack of knowledge that we really have about how bad this is going to get before it gets any better. Uh, the big one, of course, yesterday was the fact that Mulan has been delayed. We were waiting on that one to be announced since that one was a March release, and Disney finally started to announce their own movies being delayed. So Mulan has been delayed indefinitely worldwide after the China release was initially postponed. So initially, they were only postponing the China release. Now worldwide, it's been pushed back. Um, and of course, whenever you hear the words indefinitely, all that means is that they have not defined a time as of yet of when the film is going to be released. So it actually could end up working out better for Mulan in the future because they could end up getting, you know, let's say everything clears up in the next, you know, couple of months, right? We, don't have, we honestly really don't know what it's going to be like in the next couple of months. But let's say it does, and then they're able to take a weekend over the summer that they may have not had, right? Fast and Furious 9 moving uh, has now kind of left uh, open some slots. If other summer films, decide to start canceling you could potentially see especially if they decide to have an actual hard date set for 2021 you could see other studios say oh we've got to not get this open weekend and to put our film out so it could end up working out better for Mulan since it's a bigger release that was already going to be struggling seeing that they put all their eggs in the foreign basket and the foreign basket is a complete hot mess right now uh, so therefore could end up being good better for them in the long run. The other thing that is almost comical to me, obviously it's it's hard for me to laugh about this since there are people that are being very negatively impacted by everything going on with CV, but there are two other movies that Disney announced were getting pushed back and that was The New Mutants and Antlers being postponed with no release date given. The reason why is because The New Mutants has been pushed back now like three or four times. This movie was supposed to have come out, I think, at least a year, if not two years ago. And at first it was being pushed back by Fox. Then once then Disney uh, took over Fox, 
They also decided to push it back as well. I don't know if New Mutants is ever going to get a release date. And to be honest, even if it does, I just don't really see any excitement over it. So if the film finally does get a release date at some point in the future, it's a film that I don't think is going to make a whole lot of money, but it is interesting. What is also interesting is that they have not announced anything about Artemis Fowl. Artemis Fowl is actually set to come out um, around the same time, as, I think sometime in April or May. And so it's interesting that they're not you know, pushing back those films quite yet. And Artemis Fowl, I don't think was going to make a whole lot of money in the first place. Uh, it's really sad that they decided to go with Onward because Onward is now, especially with everything going on here in the U.S. and across the world, it's just, I don't think it's going to make any money this weekend. And in second weekend, having that kind of a drop-off or that kind of a lack of uh, excitement, especially in the overseas markets, uh, that's looking to be almost $150 million loss for Disney. So again, it makes sense that they have pushed back films like Mulan, which cost around $200 million to produce because they're going to want to make sure they get the return on their investment for that film. Um, but it's going to be interesting because I expect, and this is just my own personal prediction, I expect that in the next few days, possibly even the next week, we might finally start to hear about May releases. Uh, so we could see Black Widow get canceled or pushed back or other films like that coming out in May as well. So just be ready. Hold on to your horses because I think we're going to get a lot more movie cancellations and pushbacks uh, in the very near future. Uh, the one that kind of made me the most upset, John Krasinski's A Quiet Place Part 2 has been delayed indefinitely. We don't have a release date on that film yet. I'm assuming they're planning for it to be released this year. Very sad. Very, very good, solid movie. I was the first one, so I was actually very much looking forward to the second one, which seems to go kind of back and forth in time, starting off or dealing with issues of when the, you know, the catastrophic event happened in the universe that was set up in the first film so it's kind of like that prequel but it's also a sequel following the events of the first film as well so i'm actually very excited to see that film eventually when it comes out uh, also the next james bond film is one i talked about the other day no time to die was originally supposed to be released internationally on april 2nd and in the u.s on april 10th but is now being postponed until november with a release in the uk at november 12th and in the u.s november 25th i think the reason why this film was pushed back as much has a lot to do with cv but i think it also has a lot to do with the politiz uh, politicization um, of the characters that has been started already by people like uh, Daniel Craig, who have been basically trying to say, oh yeah, it's all filled with politics, which is something that no one wants to hear about. Um, so again, I think that that's being pushed back for a variety of different reasons. Uh, Paramount has delayed the release of Sonic the Hedgehog in China, which was set to debut February 28th. Sonic also had been delayed in other countries like Japan as well. So even though Sonic is profitable, it's not going to be making the amount of money that it could make. And it's sad because it means we're not going to really know exactly how successful Sonic could have been uh, because of everything going on. This is kind of disrupting the box office marketplace. And it's going to make my job as someone that looks at the box office numbers and tries to make predictions and, and tries to figure things out uh, that much more complicated because we're really living in a marketplace where we really don't know what's going to happen next. We really don't know how long these delays are going to last, if they're ever going to be released or not. And I'll give kind of my last minute thoughts about what I think studios should start doing uh, once I finish this last one. So the last thing that we know about at this point is that Sony has pushed back the release of Peter Rabbit 2, The Runaway. I know everyone's so upset about that movie being released or being pushed back. So that was set to have a release date sometime around Easter. So I think it would have probably benefited from that Easter release date. But they have pushed back their film until August 7th. So trying to get that last second uh, summer box office numbers. The sequel was originally set to release in the UK and in European markets on March 27th and the US on our April 3rd. Again, right around the time of Easter, which makes a lot of sense. But what does this mean for you know for movies going forward for the movie studios? We've talked about this a lot on my channel during our live streams, especially, and that is that I would not be surprised if a lot of these studios, because of everything going on, because of them having to push back their releases, start to consider: Do we maybe have to start making contingency contingency plans for when events like this happen to release our movies directly onto video on demand? And how do we handle that? As, as I said before, I think we're about, might, it might even be less than 10 years now because of this, maybe uh, pushing forward some of the people behind the scenes working on this. But I say that with the very least, I know, I know River, it's crazy. Uh, we're at least 10 years or so away from movie theaters uh, basically becoming irrelevant and movie studios deciding to release their films directly to their services. Because imagine Disney Plus, they have the, you know, the ability to do this really at this point in time, whether their servers can handle it, I don't know. But imagine if 
if Disney tomorrow said, we're going to release Black Widow on the same date, but we're going to release it early for our Disney Plus subscribers, and you'll have to pay, like, you know, in there, you'll have the option to buy it for, like, $10 or something like that, right? So not only are you having people that are going to be signing up for the Disney Plus service, which, again, is a monthly fee, but then you also have people who already have the service, who are new to the service, spending an extra $10 premium to get early access to a movie. I think that this might be starting to push studios in that direction. We already know that almost every major studio has at least a streaming service of their own, has one in development, or is associated with another one. So do not be surprised if potentially, especially if things get a lot worse, and if things start to realize, or people studios start to realize, we might not be able to release any major movies in this year, or at least in the next six months or so. If that happens, do not be surprised if either they start off with the lower budget films, with the ones that, that cost a little bit less to make, saying, hey, we're going to release these directly onto our service, either saying, okay, we'll release it for free on our service, so all you need to do is be a member to have access to it, or at the very least, and this is what I think is most likely going to be the future, is, okay, you have to buy our service, but then once you have our service, you have to pay a $10 extra fee to get access to brand new movies that were originally scheduled to have theatrical releases. I think that's the future of films. Uh, it's, you know, obviously one that I'm not a huge fan of because I love movie theaters. I know, River. I know. I know you love going to the movies, too. I know that. I understand. We got to calm down, all right? Everyone's freaking out right now in the media about all the stuff going on with CV, and I think that we should definitely take it seriously, but that there's no real reason for us to freak out at this time. But anyway... What are your thoughts about this? Do you think that this could push studios to start releasing their films online or to have some other plan for how to deal with it in the future? They can't just keep pushing back big releases in this way. And also, do you think this is going to push studios to start creating contingency plans for future events, right? We know that this is going to happen again. It's bound to happen, right? Illnesses and uh, diseases, viruses, etc. they're all at some point going to mutate in some form or fashion into something that most people's bodies are not able to handle. So what are we going to do about that? What are studios going to do about that? And as I said, I think the best way for them to do it, because imagine if they decided, hey, since everyone's going to be home essentially for the next two weeks or so, we're going to release this movie onto a paid you know, you know, video on demand service whether it be our own service or Google Play, iTunes, etc. And then all you need to do is you get early access to it, but of course you have to pay to get either to rent it and you can either, you know, raise the renting, you know, the rental price for that or for the actual, uh, you know, uh, the cost of the movie itself to buy it outright. But imagine if they did that earlier on. They could still make decent amount of money. They could probably even make their money back if they did it that way and they promoted it in the right way. But that's just my own thought about that. Do I think it's going to happen now? Not necessarily. But if you do see it happening, do not be surprised because these studios spent millions and hundreds of millions of dollars on a lot of these projects that they're pushing back. And they're pushing them back to the point of them either losing out on money they've already spent on marketing and have to spend even more money on marketing or they might even lose out on a great release date that could potentially cost them millions, if not hundreds of millions of dollars in the future. So again, uh, it's crazy times we're living in. These are all the movies that have been affected so far. There are going to be more movies that are going to be announced. And if there's ever a, a huge list dump at any point today or the next couple of days, I will make another video covering those things. But anyway, let me know your thoughts about this and all that you talked about in the comment section below. If you like this video, smash the like button. Give me a subscribe. It helps me a lot. You're all amazing and beautiful people. Have a wonderful day. And as always, God bless. And now to give a special shout out to my March Patreon and Subscribe Star members, animation commentator Brian P, Dion, David Brobrizic, Divex, Elizabeth M, Enrique Evangelista, Father Christopher Mela, Hail Father, Frank the Tank and the Shaw Hand Wiener Dog Clan, Harold Francis, the Honker Chunky Funky Monkey, Inflamed Wood. It's a Trap Productions, Jason Clark, Jeffrey Toon, JJ Jonathan Jerembeck. Kenneth Cameo, Lady T, Mad Mitch Dunaway, Mr. Peabody and his evil twin with the beautiful hair, Orange Hat Reviews, Outpost Dyer, Perpetual Punster, Riff Magos, Riff Racer Request, Rosetta Allen, Sir Lancelato, Steve Glasker, Teresa Martin, Theodore Benden, The DJD Show, and Tina B for Patreon, and my subscribe star peeps, Robert Revo, Larry Larry, Mr. Roy, Glinzer, G2 Cool 99, Dark Star 57, Alex McCarthy, US 888209Fast, Dean Heiss, Harold Francis, J Rod the Beer Guru, Nevadan G Adams, and ZK Man, and Mike Jackson. 
Thank you all so much for being my Patreon and subscribe star members for the month of March. You are all amazing people. Thank you so much for the support, and I hope that you are enjoying your perks. If you do not know the perks that you get, make sure you read again through uh, all the perks that are listed, and also check your messages if you're over on Patreon, because if you are a $5 and up backer on Patreon, you get special access to giveaways over on the Discord. I send out messages with a link to join the Discord server. I will then hook you up over there, and you'll have access to some really cool giveaways. Giveaways. I give away 4Ks, Blu-rays, digital codes, try and give away at least a couple of big movies, 4K Blu-ray titles a month, and try to do at least a two to three giveaways for when it comes to digital download codes. And I might try and do a little bit more this month as well because I'm always trying to add extra stuff to it. And also, if you are a $10 or up backer, then you have access to a special podcast that I'm starting to do with John the Flick Pick. That's right, John Flickinger of the Flick Pick channel. We're having a lot of fun with the podcast, and so expect that every couple weeks. And uh, of course, also any uh, extra behind the scenes, extra footage, extra interviews, extra solo podcasts as well, you will also have access to. And my special $25 and up backers on Patreon, Subscribe Star, you have access to all of those things that I've listed. You also get a t shirt. That's right, I will send you a t shirt for your first month, and of course, you can also be featured on the ah, the Chosen of Valhalla live stream once a month. You get to be featured on the Odin's Movie Blog channel. It's always usually on a Sunday around 12 p.m. Eastern time. You get to join some lovely peeps and have some really great discussion with all of the Chosen of Valhalla and me with the live audience. Anyway, you guys are all amazing and beautiful people. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day, and as always, God bless.